Welcome! In this video we're going to simplify and combine in this algebraic expression. So one of the things we're going to be using here are the laws of exponents. And if you're unfamiliar with, the, with what they are, you can try and follow along, but you might want to go back and look at some other videos that cover in detail what these laws are and how to apply them, because I'm going to be using them here in this expression. But even if you don't know them, you can follow along. I'll try to explain it uh, the best I can without going into too much detail about why these laws make sense. So let's get started. Here it says, well, let's start by reading this, this, this monster of a term here. It says 3x to the negative first power. So you should think of this as one term. And then we're adding another term here. Right? You might want to separate these just to view and, and think about what's happening. This is 2 to the negative second over x plus 2x to the fifth, and then that whole thing raised to the negative third power. And this is being multiplied by this term right here. So you can view this as one term being multiplied by this term right here. Um, you don't have to view it that way, but it's helpful to me because I know this exponent applies to these parentheses. So I'm thinking of this as one chunk of terms being raised to a power and another chunk being raised to another power. So I can see them as separate things. And just to be clear, in case you want to pause this and work ahead, this term is 3x to the seventh power and all of that squared. So, wow, what do we do here? Well, one thing that's coming up a lot in this term are negative powers. So what is um, x or anything to the negative power? And this, I think, is where we're doing a little bit of review, and um, I'm sure you've seen some of this before. If you haven't, don't worry about it. I'll try to explain it quickly. If you see something to the negative power, so x to some negative power, like negative n, what that equals is 1 over x to the n power. These are just different ways of writing the same thing. And part of the reason of, of why it's happening is that this is the reciprocal of x to the n, right? x to the negative n is 1 over that. It's just a way of defining these things that fits nicely into the laws of exponents. So what does that mean about our first term? Well, right here we have 3 times x to the negative first. So I'm going to kind of split that up and write 3 times x to the negative first. Now, x to the negative first, looking at this right here, that has to equal what? Well, we have 1 over x to the positive 1, right? Because look at this diagram right here. Take x to the negative 1. It equals 1 over x to the positive 1. It's a basic property of exponents. And we can simplify this so it reads 3 over x, right? Because 3 times 1 is just 3. You can think of 3 as 3 over 1. And 1 times x is just x. Notice I'm not writing the exponent of 1 here because it's not necessary. Anything to the first power is just itself. So x to the first power is just x. Now we're on to our next term, and we're, we're actually getting somewhere. Uh, before I forget, I'm going to put this plus sign in each case. Right, we don't want to lose track of the separation of terms here. 2 to the negative 2. two. <clears throat> well, that's going to equal 1 over... 2 to the positive 2. And this is even nicer. We don't have x here, but it's going to equal 1 over 2 to the positive 2. That's what 2 to the negative 2 equals. And we're multiplying this by something. Notice you have x in the denominator. That's the same thing as 1 over x, right? All I'm saying here, and if you can think about this, I'm going to show it over here. 2 to the negative 2 over x, that's the same thing as 2 to the negative 2 times 1 over x, right? Work backwards, and you would see that if you multiply these two, you would get this, because 1 times 2 to the negative 2 is just 2 to the negative 2. And x times, well, this is 1 right here, is just x. So what I did, and I kind of skipped ahead, is I, I split this up into two terms, right? Now we have 1 over x here, and 2 to the negative 2 becomes 1 over 2 to the positive 2. That's where I'm getting this from. I'm just splitting it apart. So let me clear this off. Okay, so what do we do here? Well, I'm going to multiply these two, and 1 times 1 is just 1. In the numerator, we have 2 squared times x. 
and we can keep going. This is going to equal 1 over 4x, right? Because 2 squared is 4. And we keep moving. Now we have these terms right here. And this is actually, it looks really terrible and, and, and disheartening, right? But really, you're taking this whole thing right here and raising it to the negative third power. So because I'm doing that, I can think of this as 1 over this whole term right here. 2x, right, to the fifth, and that to the third power. You see, what I did there, it's very similar to this, or I'm still using this formula, right? Except, instead of just having an x to the negative n, I have a whole term. It's 2x to the fifth. That's being raised to the negative third. So if you can imagine, in this formula right here, instead of x to the negative n, you have anything raised to the negative n power. And this is looking sloppy, let me fix that. Anything raised to the negative n power equals 1 over that thing, to the positive power, and that's what I'm doing right here. This term is being raised to the negative third, so it equals 1 over this term to the positive third. I'm just flipping that around. And here, in this term, I'm just going to leave it alone for a moment. I'm lying. Let me, <laughs> let me actually expand this. What does this last term mean? And we're actually getting, we're very close to being done. What is this right here? Well, this is 3x to the 7th squared, and what that means, and I'll write it right here, is 3x to the 7th times 3x to the 7th. All I'm doing there is saying this thing's squared, so we're multiplying this term by itself. And that's going to help me see what my next steps are. So what are the next steps? Well, here, 2x to the 5th is being raised to the 3rd power. Now, one property of laws of exponents when you have this setup right here, this means you raise 2 to the third power, that'll give you 8, and you raise x to the fifth to the third power. And I'll write that right here. x to the fifth to the third power, and what that means really is you have x to the fifth cubed. So it's x to the fifth times x to the fifth times x to the fifth. And if you were to expand each of these, each of these would mean x times itself five times. So it's 5x's multiplied, another 5x's, and another 5x's. All together, that's x to the 15th. And a shortcut for all of this, and one basic law of exponents, is that you can multiply the exponent on the variable, which is 5 times 3. And that's x to the 15th, right? x to the 5 times 3. So I'll write that right there. That's 8 times x to the 15th. And this is in the denominator, just like this. So now we keep going. This is squared right here, so we can think of 3 times 3 is 9, and x to the 7th times x to the 7th. Well, you might remember this property. That's just x to the 14th, because here you add the exponents, right? Same base, multiplying, when that's happening, add those exponents. So it's basically 7x's times 7x's. It's 14x's altogether. And we're almost done. This last term, as nasty as it might look, Right? We have x to the 15th in the denominator, like this, 8 times x to the 15th. In the numerator, we have 9x to the 14th. And I notice I combine them into one fraction because really, don't forget, I'm multiplying here. So 9x to the 14th is being multiplied by this fraction. So it's 1 times 9x to the 14th is just 9x to the 14th. And we have this wonderful term that we can basically get to work in simplifying here. Um, one thing you want to do, of course, when you're adding fractions is get a common denominator. But before we go ahead and do that, let's try and cancel out some stuff here. x to the 14th. Well, you can imagine that's, that's 14 x's in a row, right? x times x times x all the way 14 times. Down here we have x to the 15th. So it's 15 x's. Let me actually clear this off so I can kind of show you what I'm saying. We have 9 x times x times all the way 14 times. And here we have 8 times x times x times x, right? One more x, 15 times. So there are 15 x's here and 14 x's up there. We're dividing. So you can kind of split this up and think it's x over x and x over x. And each 
In each x that matches up, right, this is another property of exponents, they cancel out. So all of the x's will cancel out, and in the end, there'll be only one x left down here. What does all this mean? Well, that means that this is this complicated looking term, which was 9x to the 14th over 8x to the 15th, you can really just think of it as 9 over 8x. Here, let me show you what I mean. Right? 9x to the 14th over 8x to the 15th. One property of exponents when you're dividing and the bases are the same is you can subtract the exponents. So these 14 x's cancel out with all 14 of the x's down here, and we rewrite everything. So it's 3 over x plus 1 over 4x, right, plus 9 over 8x. And the law of, of exponents that we're really using here, what we would do is take x to the 14th, this is a shortcut, x to the 14th, and then subtract 15 from it. <coughs> Right, so that shortcut is when you're dividing and subtract these two exponents, and that equals x to the negative 1. Now you might be saying, well, we have x down here. But that's not x to the negative 1, but remember it is. x to the negative 1 is really 1 over x. So this term is, is 9 over 8 times x to the negative 1. Flip that around and we get 9 over 8x. Those are identical. And now we're basically done. We just have to combine these like terms, and, and to do that, I'm going to clear off a little bit here. All right, let me let me clear off some of this board. I'm going to, I think, get rid of this row right here and this one. Now, you, I mean, if you're feeling overwhelmed right now, that's, that's okay. This is normal because a lot of what's happening here seems so abstract. But this is really based on the laws of exponents and simple arithmetic properties. It just looks so nasty, so hang in there. Anyway, so let's get finished. Here, last step. Notice I have x here in this denominator. 4x and 8x. So to find the common denominator, think about it. Here, 8x will be the largest of the numbers. And 4x doubled is 8x. So to get these two equivalent, I want to double both the numerator and denominator of this middle fraction. To get this fraction, 3 over x have, having the same denominator here, I'm going to multiply both numerator and denominator by 8. This way I can get 8x here. So it looks something like this. 3 over x, multiply both numerator and denominator by 8, right? 8 over 8 doesn't really change anything. 8 over 8 is just 1. <coughs> but we'll, we're writing this fraction in a way so we can add it to the others. Here, 1 over 4x, well, I'm multiplying numerator and denominator by 2. 1 over 4x. And then, well, the last fraction we're leaving alone because we're using this denominator as our, our least common denominator. So here, what do we get? Well, this is going to be 24 over 8x. I'm just multiplying that 8 times 3 and 8 times x. Here, the next term is going to equal 2 over 8x. Just multiplying, and then we have 9 over 8x. So now we can simplify, finally, through all these steps. Add 20, well, we're adding fractions, right? So when you're adding and you have the same denominator, just add those numerators. 24 and 2 is, is 26 plus 9 is 35 over 8x. Now, we're done here, but your teacher might not want the variable in the denominator, so you would bring it back up. And we're going to almost reverse this process right here. 1 over x to the n equals x to the negative n. So that you can think of this as 1 over x to the positive 1. It equals x to the negative 1. So either of these ones might be your simplified form for this term. And that was, that was a tough one, so I enjoyed it. I hope, I hope you're, you're not discouraged here because there's so much going on, and, and if the laws of exponents are something you're rusty on, please go back and review some other videos that we have that cover this. Thanks.